Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from The Red Collectors. I got such great feedback from the last series, so I'm gonna just do another one. It is 18-wheeler American Pro Trucker. It's a game that is an arcade port. Great, great game. Uh, I'm gonna start basically through the arcade and going through all the modes in this game. Once you choose any game mode, you are presented with a choice of four big rigs. Each rig has its own look and feel to it, providing different handling and specs. In arcade mode, you are battling the clock in a checkpoint to checkpoint style racing game. What makes 18 wheel American Pro Trucker different from other arcade racing games for the Dreamcast is a rival driver. As opposed to having 18 rigs, rival drivers are put into the arcade mode to have a head to head style competition where you must pass the finish line to move on to the next location. Locations vary across America. Stage one is New York to Key West. Stage two is St. Petersburg to Dallas. Stage three is Dallas to Las Vegas. And finally, stage four is Las Vegas to San Francisco. Like I stated before, checkpoints are used to add time back onto your clock. But there are also bonus vehicles that if you run into them, they'll add three seconds to your overall time. The controls are very simple and easy to get used to. Right trigger is gas, left trigger is brake. A button simply used to shift your gears from low gear to high gear if you shift too fast and you won't get much torque to pass your rival. B button is used for reversing. This is mostly used for a parking mini game. We'll cover that later. X button is used for your horn and the Y button is used to change your camera view. Just like any arcade racer, there are shortcuts that you will need to take to beat your rival driver. Most shortcuts tend to be off-road and have a few surprises. With destructible buildings and bridges throughout the layout, you'll be surprised at what you see. If you look in the backdrop, 18-wheeler has quite a few surprises. One of these surprises is a freaking tornado that follows you for a bit. Great attention to detail. In between stages two and three and three and four, you're greeted with two parking mini games. If you park in the proper place in the time given, you are awarded with two upgrades to your truck. I never did figure out if these upgrades were just cosmetical upgrades or if they actually contributed anything to the truck. I guess time will tell. When and if you do change the camera angle with the Y button, the angle shifts to a cockpit view of inside the truck. This is a welcome addition because while in this view, you can see an air freshener hanging in the rear view mirror swinging back and forth. There's even a pair of sunglasses on the dashboard that slide while making turns. Avalanche! While at times your rival driver's AI seems as if he has turbo on while zooming by you, other times he plays it dumb as if he's waiting for you to pass. While day and night cycle transitions are nothing new in gaming today, in the year 2000, day and night cycles need to be a little bit more creative. In 18 wheeler, the use of a tunnel was a nice touch. This transition makes the gamer believe that he traveled to another city. Even the Golden Gate Bridge makes an appearance in this game. All in all, the arcade mode was a true joy to play. 18 wheeler is fun enough for newcomers to play and definitely enjoyable for those who have very little time in their busy schedules to fit in. While done in arcade mode, why not give parking challenge a try? It's similar to the mini games that are placed in the arcade mode. It just adds checkpoint to checkpoint style gameplay that once cleared you move on to the next stage.
Score Attack is another fun addition that allows the player to pick a rig, pick its haul, and pick a course. The goal is to complete each course with the least amount of damage to your haul and accumulate cash by damaging bonus vehicles. You lose money by hitting other vehicles and trucks throughout the race. Finally, records and options. These are pretty self-explanatory, allowing you to view your current records in a score attack. And finally, your options. Gameplay settings only, that's all you need to know. Now with another review out of the way, I can honestly say this game does stand the test of time. It's fun, it's fast, and it's arcadey.